as i told you mitigation measures for any disaster we will divide them into structural measures and non structural so for example structural measures structural measures means the measures of how to construct buildings what code what methods you have to use in construction to reduce the impact of earthquake are called structural measures for example have you ever seen a building like this see foundation of building a large building means it is a building generally building has many parts no between different parts they will put a big ball kind of thing like this big ball means the building is not continuous they break the entire building into three four parts in between they put a ball so that during earthquake you no know, see actually if a single building you no know, during earthquake stress will build up the building will break it fall down if you divide the building into parts put a big ball in center during earthquake where all parts move the energy will go out the energy will not stay inside the building that means the seismic energy will be released outside the building it won't go into the building actually this is called this ball is there no it's called seismic dampener seismic dampener seismic dampener should seismic dampener should be provided in large structures small building hut for small hut you don't need to make a dampener large buildings dampeners are required dampeners okay or for example you might have seen some buildings no this is a foundation below the foundation there will be like this made up of lead lead and rubber also rubber below the ground this is ground this is the ground friend above the ground directly you will not consider building this is a ground from the ground you put some rubber bearings rubber or lead on that you consider the building so that when earth moves no the building will not move why because earth moves the rubber bearings are there no they will absorb some of the energy they will for example in the car also there will be shock absorbers right this is the car tire will not attach to the car there will be some gap so when tire moves the car also will not move when the speed breaker no tire will move more but car will move less shock absorber like that when earthquake comes it should, it should not directly come into the building something should absorb it that is lead rubber bearings bearing in the base of the building this method is called as base isolation method this method is called base isolation method base isolation method means you are isolating the base base of the building from the earth isolating them not attaching them understand for example if everybody has got covid what will you do you will isolate yourself so that it will not come to you similarly the base isolated from the remaining part of the earth from the earth okay also friends do you know generally during the earthquake if the building falls on you nothing should happen to you basically so the building should not be very heavy the bricks should be hollow bricks hollow do you know hollow brick lightweight hollow concrete bricks you have to use hollow hollow concrete friends i am telling you the basic simple points actually if you go into civil engineering structural design will have many points structural design for example there, there are points like uh, if you are in the zone 4 or zone 5 the steel the steel that used in you know, a building uh, reinforced cement con reinforced steel reinforcement there do you know steel 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 is used in the building because steel has a capacity to yield it will bend if you build with only rocks they will break and fall down steel can bend the yield strength of the steel actually for the steel that you use in the building which is built in zone 4 zone 5 the yield strength the yield strength should be 415 newton per meter square but these kind of points i'm not telling you what i'm saying is this kind of points is not required it's not expected in upsc you just measure these are the very simple basic points now these kind of broad points only they expect in answer technical details are not expected this is not a civil engineering exam upsc exam no so remember simple points hollow concrete bricks are because if the building is lightweight 
light weight it will not fall easily here it falls also it will not, it will not impact it will not damage much for example friends see in every building there are columns column and there are what is this very good these are beam beam these are columns can anyone tell me which should be heavy or should be light what should be heavy or should be light beam yes beam should be lightweight column should be heavy column should be able to resist the building but beam should be lightweight this is another point i'm i'm telling you structural measures structural measures to mitigate to mitigate the effect of earthquake when earthquake comes you know you have to mit mitigate the effect of the earthquake for that you have to maintain these structural measures okay for example do you know what is see these kind of technical points for example one more technical point is do you know what is reinforced cement cement concrete pre stressed cement concrete we go and read for some time what is reinforced cement concrete and pre stressed pre stressed cement concrete this is reinforced cement concrete which is better than which is better i told you reinforced better reinforced cement concrete is better than this is better better than pre stressed cement concrete actually friends there are hundreds of points the the standard 1993 building standards no 1993 building standards have many points for example see there is a point like if the zone is in if the area region is in zone 4 or zone 5 for the building you have to construct a shear wall you know what a shear wall so for example shear wall means this is a building no there should be a shear wall between do one thing in youtube you just type the advantage of shear wall in a building of earthquake zone they will show in youtube they will show movement when the building moves how shear wall actually helps you how shear wall helps you you see in the youtube uh, thing to have a clear picture of that okay shear wall should be there is better shear wall okay so you know have you heard uh, have you heard something called soft story do you know what is uh, soft story have you heard soft story when soft story means in a building in the cellar some cellars will have very few columns above there the building will be full building will be there one story two story many stories will be there full but cellar will be vacant completely vacant with just few pillars that is called soft story it's not safe keeping the base completely vacant empty with only few pillars and constructing heavy building on top is not safe during earthquake you know this base cannot withstand the enter building it will collapse so that is called soft story so soft story should be avoided soft story should be we have to avoid the soft story because soft story is not suitable for earthquake regions here is okay these areas are not this is a zone 2 area this is what i think so you know to worry much earthquake just so you can build like whatever you want but there in zone 4 zone 5 soft story shall be avoided actually delhi falls under zone 3 and zone 4 delhi so in delhi all structure shall be resistant to the earthquake but actually not falling delhi uh, many scientists are telling that there is high chance of delhi getting a large earthquake in next few years when it happens none of these structures right now ready for it most structures are not resistant they will fall down but now you cannot uh, change you know but still forget about individual buildings houses up to you your building if you die who bothers up to you but hospitals and schools and public buildings shall be retrofitted shall be ninth point shall be retrofitted retrofitting means see a old building you have to repair them put some seismic dampness try to build shear walls try to change some things in the building means the old building retrofitting it to make it suitable to withstand the 
impact of the earthquake retrofitting is very important so that's why in delhi these days government actually wants to invest much money in retrofitting the hospital schools because during the earthquake a school hospital should not fall down because it cause large damage in school hospitals so retrofitting is important friends actually is the problem of money if you want to construct a building as for all these standards you have to invest more who will invest more i am a builder i am building apartments do you think i'll shear wall uh, precess reinforcement concrete yields and 415 seismic dam will do all those things i want to build the building for low cost the building should look very beautiful sell the building for high price get the profits that's all right so it is responsibility of the municipal corporation to not give permission to such builders they have to ensure their builders have to build so there you have to cut the corruption corrupt officials will give permission without the uh, earthquake resistant measures they give permission that shall be stopped this is the most important thing that shall be stopped do you know what you have to do friends is not easy thing see in the class i can tell you many things i uh, do that do this here do india should do all those things. but in reality it's not so easy for example in reality every building will have financiers some financiers will give the money the financiers may be banks or it may be any other uh, informal informal organizations they will give money no generally they will not give much money they will not give much they will for the building is there i am constructing a building i want a loan of 2 crores if i have to take all seismic measures it becomes 3 crores now the financiers should give me the money no 3 crores they will say why 3 crores to go jana for this place so financiers should have awareness so government actually should give we have to conduct awareness session to financiers even designers friends the building designers know they design the buildings from 30 40 years suddenly they cannot change design no so you have to give awareness they have to be trained we call it as capacity building we call it as we call it as capacity building is training them explain them how they have to change design i am a famous designer but i never put jamperers bearings all these things now i have to shut that awareness for designer then builder builders are like proper uh, highly commercial businessmen builders of course they have no other way now builders have to be said that see reduce your profit margins slightly for safety otherwise they will not give permission to you the balance see they cannot go in losses by investing money in the uh, uh, proper steel or proper base isolation all these things they cannot give losses if they go into losses will by the building and awareness shall be given to customers also customers friend customers are the biggest uh, trouble makers no in fact these people are okay finance designers builders they are okay customers are the biggest problem i am a customer friend i want to go buy a building this building is there excellent painting so for the basis the, the seller is highly vacant i can park the cars there okay another building seller is full pillars and they are telling me the cost of almost like 4 uh, crores per one flat here 3 crores per flat this is looking very beautiful beautiful because they did not follow any seismic measures they followed all damp all measures and not looking great which one will i buy 3 crores only then if the government tells me hey earthquake comes means it follows let the earthquake come at the end see i am not afraid of earthquakes i am not afraid of earthquakes i am a hero because i never saw earthquake in delhi i never saw earthquake there is a common mentality of many people so customers if customers are like that tell me how can financiers builders and designers will change they will not change you know so customers are very important a customer have to go and buy a building which is seismic resistant resistant to seismic waves okay then anybody friend even the municipality people the municipality car the municipal corporator municipality employees i mean the municipal uh, civil engineer the municipal engineers are there no first of all they should have awareness municipal engineers do not know exactly what is damper or what is bsh they do not know because they forgot it long time back they studied all those things when they wrote the exam uh, electrical engineering exam c exam all the points in the exam they never saw such buildings friends how trading exam for 20s experience i have i never saw any building like that i'll forget all those things you know again relearn unlearn and uh, relearn municipal corporation employees everybody basically you understand so there are actually this is called as stakeholder approach stakeholder in ethics in ethics we use the word stakeholder 
what is stakeholder stakeholder is in the process because of the process who are the people who are involved in the process for example you want to create a process i want to create seismic resistant buildings in delhi now who are the various stakeholders who are involved in this all these people involved so i have to train these people keep give counsel to these people only then i can go to the government without counseling these people directly from today onwards uh, seismic resistant uh, buildings are a must i can put tools like this awareness counseling is required okay training anyhow some areas depending on the area zone 5 one kind of measures zone 4 one kind of zone 3 like that okay anyhow friends let us keep the structural measures aside structural is over now let us go to non structural measures what are non structural measures friends teachers professors ups aspirants they'll write many things in answer it should be like this we have all but in reality most of them are not possible so you should understand that okay now what are the non structural measure